Welcome to Third Floor Views, a production of Chesapeake Family Life, where we talk about health, education, and living with kids. I'm your host, Janet Jefferson. This episode is sponsored by Annapolis Pediatrics. For more than 70 years, Annapolis Pediatrics has provided exceptional health care to infants, children, adolescents, and young adults in Annapolis and the surrounding communities. They have over 30 physicians and nurse practitioners to serve your family, and now in six locations, Annapolis, Crofton, Edgewater, Severna Park, Kent Island, and Pasadena. Learn more about Annapolis Pediatrics and find helpful parenting resources, videos, and more at annapolispediatrics.com. So today on Third Floor Views, we are talking about the recent local honoree for the Gloria Barron Prize for Young Heroes, and that is Reed Spalding. So just a little bit about the Gloria Barron Prize for Young Heroes. It's a national award that celebrates inspiring public spirited young people from across the US and Canada. And it was established in 2001 by author T.A. Barron. The Barron Prize annually honors 25 outstanding young leaders ages eight to 18 who have made a significant positive difference to people or the environment. So Reed, who is a local from Towson, he's 18 years old, and he created the Tributary Festival, an annual benefit concert that raises money to protect the Chesapeake Bay. Reed, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. To our viewers and listeners, this episode is pre-recorded, but we always love to hear from you. So feel free to send us any comments or questions that you might have. Reed, let's get started. So first off, tell us what is the Tributary Festival? Uh, yeah, tell for the, sure. details. The, the Tributary Festival is a, as you're saying, a student-led benefit music festival with all proceeds supporting the Chesapeake Bay. Um, we just held our second annual event uh, this September 11th. We returned to the Baltimore Museum of Industry, a, a beautiful venue right down on the Inner Harbor, which is also a tributary of the Chesapeake Bay. Um, we had uh, an amazing event this year. We raised over $11,000 to support the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, which brings our total funds up to somewhere around $20,000 over the past two years. Um, we've had an amazing team of student volunteers and leaders that helped put on the event. Um, I started it, started working on it back in 2019. We had to push back a couple of times due to COVID. So we had our first in-person festival on um, September 26th of 2021. Then we went right back to work and brought it back for 2022. Now we have a whole new team of leaders who are working on our 2023 festival. Oh, that's awesome. That's so exciting. So you had said that there had been, um, you know, some setbacks due to COVID and I'm sure there were lots of ups and downs in that process. Um, what happened and how did you persevere? Because going from 2019 to 2021 is a really big difference, especially when you're trying to plan a festival. Um, what, what was the process and what did that look like? Yeah, um, we started planning for the event in 2019 in late August. Um, and we were originally scheduled for April of 2021 or April of 2020, sorry, April of 2020. But then of course, everything shut down, no in-person events, no large gatherings. So we pushed back to June got canceled. Then we had a couple dates in July we were trying for. Those got canceled. So we realized pretty quick we had to kind of shift our focus, kind of make some changes. But I still wanted to do some things to raise money and kind of advocate for the cause because the Chesapeake Bay is so meaningful to me. So we held, um, first, I'm in a band and I'm a musician, which kind of helped inspire this whole thing. So my band and I held a, um, a live stream concert via the Tributary Festival from just my front yard. And then I also put on a virtual music festival, which included uh, pre-recorded performances from a bunch of different acts, including like nationally touring acts, OK Go, uh, Spencer Tweedy, and some more local student acts, which was really cool. Um, we also had a fishing slash like nature photography contest that we put on to kind of just spread advocacy, which kind of engaged some local students. I know we got some awesome submissions from different Towson High fishing club members and other students around the community with their best catches and cool pictures of themselves on the bay. That sounds awesome. And that sounds really um, incredible that you were able to pivot after so many setbacks. And I can't think of a more challenging set up than having a festival, an in-person festival, and then having um, COVID hit. So that's 
Um, it's really impressive. Um, oh, thank you so much. So you were saying that, you know, you're a musician, you have a band and that you, you love the Chesapeake Bay, but tell me more about both of those, those aspects. Um, what inspired you to, to raise money for the Bay through a festival? Yeah. Um, I've, I've always been interested in music. My parents will say like, I would hit pans and pots with spoons since I was a little kid. Um, I was always loud and <laughs> probably they didn't like um and they probably didn't like it even more when in fourth grade I got my first drum kit and started taking drum lessons um and that was kind of my first instrument and in fifth grade I started up this band with a bunch of my friends had a clarinet in it, it had a euphonium which is like a miniature tuba it was a it was a ragtag group of of people but we were just having a good time having fun and actually that band has still been performing together. We played our, our last official gig since our guitarist went to music school um, at the last Tributary Festival a couple weeks ago. So it's been a really great time with them. We've played lots of cool shows across the county, different uh, restaurants, uh, other festivals, other benefit events, which has been awesome. And then on the other side of that, I've always had a huge interest in the Chesapeake Bay. It's always been a huge part of my life. Um, I grew up going to my grandparents' house on the Potomac every, um, every summer since I was born, um, they had that house. And actually the year I started the festival was the year they sold the house. So it was kind of my way of continuing on that legacy, continuing on my connection to the Bay. Um, I'd spent so much time there crabbing and fishing and tubing and just hanging out on the boat and just being in that environment. And it was so incredible to be able to give back to the, to the environment that kind of raised me as a kid. Mm, yeah, absolutely. So I see that there's like such, you know, clear, two clear things that you, you have a passion in, but then how did you come up with the idea to put them together and, um, and have this festival? Because being a musician in a band is one thing and loving the Bay is also one thing, but then coming up with the idea to put them together and raise a lot of money, that's a lot of work. And yeah. um, it's, it's such a it's such a great idea, but it, it's a big leap from those two sides. So how did that happen? Yeah, so um, it was the the summer of of twenty nineteen, August twenty nineteen. We were on a family vacation in Cape Cod, and the because of like the local regulations they have there, just like the waterways of Cape Cod are so much cleaner than they are here. Like there was, a, there was a visible difference that I could definitely tell. And it was actually my mom who brought the idea to me and she was like, you should do something hope back home that would like support our water. Like you've always been interested in the Chesapeake Bay. We've been going to this house for so long. You should do something to help this out. And like immediately I knew like I have to, like that's a great idea, mom. And, but I wanted to think of something that would be meaningful to me that would really tie together everything I loved. And the first idea I had was to do a music festival because I'd always loved going to music festivals and I'd love playing at them as my band. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be amazing to have one that is supporting such a great cause that's so near and dear to my heart. Yeah, oh, I love it. So, so planning a festival, what is the most challenging part, you know, other than all the COVID setbacks, what have you found to be um, the hardest part of that? Definitely, I would say to anyone out there that is planning on hosting their own festivals, um, being persistent is so necessary because you never know when someone's going to respond, what's going on in someone's life. Like maybe your email is not reaching them. Maybe your calls aren't going through. But if you keep sending those messages, you stay on it, you persevere through and you really want that to happen something will work out for you if you just keep working on it keep pushing through put in the hours every day i would say definitely um, i would think a lot of people when they're hit with that roadblock when they like something doesn't work out the first time or the second time or the third time that doesn't mean you should just stop trying i you got to keep pushing through i think yeah, that's a really great life skill too. It can, it's, it's so useful in so many different situations. Um, so you were just recognized as an honoree by the Gloria Baron Prize for Young Heroes. 
what does being a Gloria Baron honoree allow you to do? So what's what's the deal with this prize and, and why is it special? Well, it's it's amazing prize that they have to like honor these students that are doing so much work for the environment. Like I've been looking through all the other awardees and they've been doing just such incredible, amazing things. People, it's it's awesome to see like what students across the United States and Canada have been putting together to support their local environments and like tackling these big issues all all across um, the nation, which is, is, it's just amazing for me to see. But um, really there's so many benefits to the prize, but a major one I would say is like the press. I've been getting like this opportunity right now and so many others, they're just helping to spread the cause and spread like the message of all these students that are like supporting the environment is such a big important issue right now with climate change and global warming and all the issues facing the world. A lot of people might forget about the smaller local issues when they're seeing all the sea level risings and the major hurricanes in the Caribbean and all that going on. They might forget about like the small town things that are really playing a bigger role and have a bigger impact on your day to day life. And it's important to remember that um, these issues are just as big to address, just as important to confront as those other major issues here you hear about in like mainstream media and in the news. And the Gloria Barron Prize has really helped me to be able to and helped all these students to be able to promote their individual causes and the causes of like the environmental advocacy community as a whole and support like all the all the issues in the environment to help bring them to the forefront of people's um, mindset and what everyone's thinking about. Yeah, I can see how the the press and getting your name and your cause out there is is critical. Um, but even just what you're saying is the importance of local and reminding people how how change happens, you know, at your doorstep first, and that's where it also impacts you first. And so that is also a really yeah, for sure. powerful lesson. Um, oh, sorry. No, go for oh, it. We were uh, this year we were able to partner with the CBF to kind of put together uh, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation to kind of put together a. Uh, a custom sponsorship to even make it more, or sorry, not sponsorship, like a custom donation tier to kind of even make it more um, localized and support like issues that are bigger to us as like the Baltimore community, the Maryland community and like the whole Delmarva region. So we were supporting specifically oyster recoveries right now, which was really cool that we were able to work with them on that and kind of tailor fit our, the local needs of the community to fit where our funds would be allocated towards. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Do you think going forward that there's going to be sort of a special focus for each festival? That would that would be a goal. Yeah, it's it's been really great working with the uh, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, uh, Jessica Rubino. We were talking. She, she's been a main point there, and she's been super helpful. And everyone there, um, it's been awesome to work with them because they've really helped support our event so well. They've given us so much guidance. They've been present at both years with. They're individual student leaders who are all incredible. Um, they bring their own energy and their own vibes and everything they have is awesome. Um, but yeah, I think it is definitely a priority to have like a specific thing that each festival, especially as we transfer, like right now, since I'm gonna be out of the Baltimore County school system, I'm gonna be graduated in college next fall, which is when the next festival is planned for. So we have two new presidents that are taking over the event and now they're organizing it with a whole new team of leaders, which has been an interesting transfer of power. I, I, I think they're suited for it. I think they're excited to get into it, but we'll see what they do with it. And they're a great group of kids. Um, so I think it'll be good that they'll be able to impart their own influence on it and kind of fit the festival to maybe some of their, like they don't have the same experience as me. I don't have the same experiences as them. So they might be able to support something that is more important to them or do what they would like to do with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exciting too, just to get yeah. new perspectives for the festival. Though I can only imagine, you know, this festival is your baby and you're handing it over. Um, I That is a lesson in itself on, um, on, I guess, humility, but also, you know, knowing when it's time to move on and sort of- Yeah, I'm excited to see what they'll be able to do with it. I'm, I have no doubt they'll, they'll do great things. I'm sure. So thinking about um, resources, you know, you've mentioned how CBF is, has been such a great partner. Um, what were some of your most helpful resources or people 
that help you put together the festival um, and that you found the most useful as you went through this process? Oh yeah, for sure. I have, I have so many people to, to thank for helping me put this together. Um, definitely my, my parents, my mom and my dad, they've been so supportive, so helpful. They were reading over my emails when I was in ninth grade and making spelling mistakes all over the place and helping fix up my grammar. Now they're like st stuck with me reading over insurance contracts and <laughs> making sure I check the fine print. So that's been so incredible to have them. We've also gotten some amazing support from some great local sponsors that have provided both monetary donations to put on the festival or in-kind donations through different um, services. So we definitely like to support or definitely like to thank the Lutherville Rock School, which is a local music school. They provided all the like audio equipment along with um, Drew Wright, who has been my drum teacher since the fourth grade. Um, and he ran sound for the event and has been so helpful. He has a lot of experience in like event management, putting on these types of things. So he's been so helpful. I can call him up anytime. He has his, his wisdom, his experience on what to do. And when I have questions about like, what cables do I get? Or like, where do we plug stuff in? Like he'll know he's, he's always ready, which is so cool. And this year we were even able to expand to having a main stage and an acoustic stage, which I'm sure was a new challenge for him to be just given like an 18 year old kid telling him like, oh, now you have two stages going on. But he's been so, so supportive with that. And then I'd also definitely like to stay, uh, thank Stages Music Arts, which is another local music school. And they provided the main stage, which was an awesome, just major festival stage. It provided a very legit look, an awesome infrastructure for all our bands. They all, they all loved it and it was so cool. They came out in the pouring rain at eight in the morning to the Baltimore Museum of Industry that I know we all were worried like oh what's gonna happen like hope it lets up thank god by the time the bands came in it was just misting and it was awesome everything worked out um stages also provided and Lutherville both provided um bands for the event so it was great to showcase some student talent at the festival including two of these bands from Lutherville which won a battle of the bands we organized back in the spring Oh, nice. which was a fundraiser to raise money to put on this festival. We raised over $2,000 from that and had a bunch of student bands and the winning two bands got to share a set at the event. So it was really cool. We had some like seven-year-old kids singing the Beastie Boys on the stage, which was awesome. It's just, that was just incredible to see. Everyone in the audience was going crazy. That was, that was awesome. I can and only we, imagine. Yeah, we had we have some awesome other sponsors too. Charm City Run is a local running store which donated to us. Trade Point Atlantic, um, CQ, the Baltimore T-shirt company helped us out uh, with all our shirts. I'd like to. Oh, Adam Odd is a great designer. If anyone's looking for a designer, I know I'm just rambling off a list of people, but all of no. these people you're definitely gonna want to check out. How did you become connected with all these? people did you is this sort of your persist, persistent emailing but then how did you even know who to reach out to yeah so a lot of it was my persistent emailing I also have a club at the school that I started called the tributary club we have over 85 members right now it's the largest student-led club at Towson High School um, and that's where like we found our new leadership team through and that's where a lot of the festival organization is happening especially right now as we transition away from me doing it into a new group of students. We're getting even more student centric. So a lot of them were able to use their own connections and draw upon their own influences to help us get our sponsors. And I know like people's parents were connected and we used that, but also, yeah, a lot of it was just like, I used the, um, the Maryland green registry, which is uh -huh. there are businesses that can be registered as like green entities if they fulfill certain requirements and I, there are probably there are hundreds of businesses on the list and I just one by one went through every one wrote up an email customized it to fit the business and like just sent it off and then just kept following up until people responded to me for that that's a tremendous amount of work that's very <laughs> impressive but it's that's a really helpful thing to think about in terms of the resources you use it's like okay here's you know this green directory that fits with your your mission and this yeah. makes a lot of sense to connect to the work that you're doing yeah it's um, always great to find just like 
a list somewhere. So you can then, <laughs> so then just work off of that. <laughs> so true. Uh, what advice do you have for adults, whether that be parents or teachers or or whoever, um, on how to support young people's dreams? So you talked about all these different people that that were supporting you in one way. Um, what advice do you have for the adults out there? Yeah, I would definitely say don't. I I don't want to say don't crush anyone's like ambition like that. That sounds too harsh. I don't think anyone would ever do that. But just because an idea might seem too big or might seem like, oh, they wouldn't be able to accomplish that. I would, I would stray away from stifling someone's creativity or stifling what someone's going to do because you think they will fail. Like if they're going to fail, I would let them fail on their own accord. Like I know I've failed many times and then <laughs> I, out of the hundreds of emails I sent out to sponsors, I maybe got six back I don't know um and maybe three of them actually gave me money so there's there's plenty of failure but also in failure is where you really you learn things so if you have a big idea like a, a music festival and people wouldn't often think like oh that's just a kid putting that on like that's that's whatever like that's just that's too difficult I wouldn't it's hard to put into words what I'm saying but I think it was it's just important to foster an idea that kids can make a real difference in the world that you aren't you aren't just doing things for a college application you aren't just doing things for the grade you aren't just doing things for fun or doing things because you're a kid you're you can do things that can make a measurable impact on the world you can do things that will make real change in your local community and i think it's important for like adults and parents teachers anyone to kind of recognize that and students anyone has that potential to do that and to be able to really foster that and support um, kids' ability to make real change. I think that's a really important reminder for adults. Um, what advice do you have for other young people who have their own big dreams and they want to change the world? Um, what would you What would you tell them? Definitely go for it. I would say a hundred percent, a hundred million percent, go for it. If you have a dream, if you have an idea, just just do it. Um, it if there's something that you want to do, I don't think that you aren't going to be able to do it. You at least should try because I always have my doubts. Like I never knew like if I was going to be able to pull this through and even looking back on like when the festival got canceled due to COVID, there were so many things that I had overlooked. And so it, it's so good that it got canceled. because it, <laughs> <laughs> it would have not gone as smoothly as it did the next year, but um, with the support of like the teachers, the parents we were talking about before and the combination of students being able to realize like we can make real change, we can do this thing. Um, I would definitely say just go for your goals, try to make things work. And even if like you have to bring things down, you have to temper your expectations, you can still always push further. You can still always work as hard as you can and eventually you'll get something working out for you. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. Of your your first initial response is just like, just do it, just try, just, <laughs> just see how it goes. I love that. Um, so you are a senior, you're graduating this year, you're already planning on handing the festival off to a new set of leaders. Um, what's next for you? What are your next big dreams that you want to work on? Yeah, well, over the next two months, I've been working on my college applications. I've kind of been chilling out on the uh, on the festival work, trying to get all that stuff done. Um, but yeah, I definitely have. I've definitely planned to go to uh, to go to college. I'm applying to a bunch of schools. Um, but ultimately, my goal is to do something in the music industry, from being maybe a music producer or working as uh, some sort of music lawyer. I'm a member of the. Uh, I'm in the law and public policy program at Towson High School, which is like a magnet program at the school where you take like law classes. And it's kind of shown me that I might not want to be a lawyer because <laughs> it's it's pretty tough and some of the concepts are, are pretty difficult, but it's definitely shown me like the value of like the business side and definitely looking through things with like an analytical lens. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of know I might not be like the strongest performance-based musician, but I, I know I love the industry. 
uh, which I've definitely learned from this event. So I definitely want to go into something with that. I'd love to, an ultimate goal of mine somewhere down the road would be to own a recording studio and produce records out of there. So hopefully I can get that working sometime in the future, no matter how far away that would be. Well, that all sounds really exciting and I wish you nothing but the best. So thank you so much, Reed Spaulding, who is an honoree of the Gloria Barron Prize. Thank you also to all of our viewers and listeners and to our sponsor, Annapolis Pediatrics. Make sure that you visit ChesapeakeFamily.com for up-to-date local information on home health and living for today's Maryland parent. This episode will be archived on ChesapeakeFamily.com in video and podcast format. I'm Janet Jefferson with Chesapeake Family Life and Third Floor Views. Thanks so much. Thank you.